Welcome everybody to Adventures in Commercialization. I'm Zoe Heaney and we're here with a great friend of mine, an entertainer, great girl. She's just like doing her best and making sure that she can succeed in the new realm of this new world. She's uh, the new entertainer that we have here. So we have Jane Carter. Jane, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Hi, Hi I'm Jane Carter. Um, I am, I do a bunch of things. Um, I'm an aerialist. I also just recently started uh, trying to do some acting and some modeling. Um, I also uh, own an oyster farm <laughs> and an aerial art studio. I do shows and produce events and stuff like that. A true serial entrepreneur, if I can just hear that out of your mouth right now. So uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, just, I know that one thing that's been a theme of our show is making it through COVID. And I know that the entertainment industry, we're going a little bit back. One of our first episodes was about entertainment, owning your art. How do you own your art and how did you make it through COVID? So, um, I'll start with the COVID story first because that one's a little easier to tell and then I'll do the other section. So um, COVID hit and it was at the point in, I'm gonna call it my career, just so weird to say, but I was at the point in my career where things are just moving forward. I had a whole bunch of shows booked. Um, I had all kinds of things on my plate ready to go. And then all of a sudden it was like the world just shut down. And so now what do you do? You're an entertainer. You really enjoy, um, you know, being out there and entertaining people and making art and doing stuff. And now, what do you do because things are just done? And um, I'm like, gonna cry about it. It was. Oh, <laughs> no, my God. Um, like, I lost my dream job to COVID, and that's why I really wanted to talk to you about about this on this show. And so, don't even try to get emotional because you're gonna get me emotional. But no, I lost my dream job to COVID. So, I, did, I was in an event coordinator for a oh, wow. large 40,000 people events. I was doing really large events and I lost my job to COVID because it was really hard. Mm -hmm. And the entertainment industry where we are uh, client facing uh, entertainment introduction to these big realms, it's very difficult. And I, I also got very emotional because of this type of uh, setback for us. Yeah. So depressing like all of a sudden your world is over and you don't know what to do you want to be you know you, this is your passion and now you can't so you know how do you move forward from that and there wasn't a lot of like SBA money for event places or you know people who plan events it was just you were just taken out at your knees mm -hmm. so um it was really challenging actually and like what do I do how do I make this work and I was like okay well do I, can I even keep the studio open anymore? Like what's going to happen to the studio? Gyms were closed down. And this is the part that's making me emotional. Um, my students just kept their packages. They just, they said, we don't care. We don't care what's going to happen. We're going to keep supporting the studio. And I just immediately transitioned to doing Zoom classes at home. We tried to come up with different things that didn't involve um, equipment for people who didn't have equipment at home. So I had a whole bunch of folding chairs at the studio. People came and picked them up in mass and went home. We did like chair dance online. And, you know, if you had a pole, we could teach some pole dance. We did a lot of stretching. Um, and then for me personally, as an entertainer, I actually lucked out a little bit because some of the people that I had um, performed with started doing DJ Zoom, I guess, like DJ Zoom events. And so they would, we'd log in through Twitch and they would pull the feed in from, I forget what the other program was, but they would pull it, pull it into their Twitch and they would just be DJing in the corner would be like, you know, me in this tiny little box. So I think that was the other part that I really, I think made me change how I view things because all the artists were trying to help each other. How do we continue to be creative in a world that doesn't want us right now? Mm -hmm. let's take a little bit of a setback and let's look at what you're actually doing so let's look at your website a little bit if we could bring that up and show she's an aerial artist she's an acro artist she's an entertainer she's an actress like Jane you're doing a lot of great things and <laughs> I just want to promote you in every way possible she's nationwide 
travels around the entire nation doing amazing things. That's actually how I met you. Yeah. It was a beautiful <laughs> event where she was beautifully like body painted up on her little moon. She was amazing. And I met her and I just realized that she is a brand and she creates her own brand. I'm getting goosebumps even talking about it. I know, I'm like, you're so nice. I know, this is an emotional, great conversation, but there's a lot of people and the whole conversation that we're having right now is around entertainment and owning your art. And also how some people, they lost their jobs over COVID. And I want to bring some other people in the future on this show about how they realized they could learn how to sew because they were getting, getting governmental funding and they wanted to make their passion into their project and their project into a career. But you already had that going. Like you really already had something really going for you. But during COVID, we didn't have the realm to do that. We didn't have the audience to do that. We weren't able to be live. So I want to just learn a little bit about how you were able to make it through that year. How did you make it through that year? Yeah, so it was, you know, it was tricky because the events are all gone and we don't know if they're coming back. We don't know when they're coming back. We're not allowed to have big, you know, groups of people together. Like, what do you, what do, you do? And so I, um, like I said, I kind of, with the studio, I was able to continue teaching classes and that helped me remind myself I'm emotional. That helped me remind myself that this is what I love. Like, I don't want to give this up because there was a good month or two where I, I was like, how do I, do I, like, how do I move forward? Like, maybe the world just doesn't care about art anymore. There's no money in it. So I started um, continuing with my classes. And then I hooked up with, like I said, some people that um, did DJ shows on Twitch. And they, you know, I, I set up a green screen and they just pulled me in so that I could con continue performing even though it wasn't live, it was still something. And so that helped a lot. So networking, really internally networking, like your internal network, the people that you were already working with, trying to figure out a new idea for this new age. That's totally great. Like, I, I don't want you to be emotional because trust I, me, okay. I got very emotional over COVID. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners who are going to watch this they also are in that exact same place. You know, it's very difficult. I I got very depressed over COVID. 40,000 people yeah. to working Nothing. from home is so hard. Yeah. So that's what that, that's what this is all about. But what are you doing now? So, now you're acting, you're doing other things, like you're out there. Yeah. So also because of COVID, um, I wanted I still wanted to be creative and I still wanted that like creative spark, you know. And so I started getting back into modeling and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go do some weird stuff. Like I made, I made a whole bunch of costumes and I was like, I'm going to go do some weird things. I made like a peacock costume and took some photos with my birds. Like it was just so breeds peacocks. Let me just tell everybody. I love her. I have chickens and they're just not as cool as her peacocks. But I love my chickens too. Have are you, are you taking the little feathers and turning them into like yes a, that's why I got them like so I actually hatched them during COVID that was another creative thing that I did I was like you know what I think I want some birds and I'm gonna hatch these peacocks and see if they hatch and so they're two years old now and they're just starting to get feathers and I can't wait till I have all the feathers so I can make all kinds of crazy costumes <laughs> look at her <laughs> serial entrepreneur right here Jane Carter in the oh, right now so I started doing some modeling and I, you know, cause it was, you could do it outside and you were very far away from the photographer. It wasn't, you know, as scary to be around other people. So that helped my socialization fix. And one of the photographers said, you know, you should really do some modeling. And I was like, nah, this is just for fun. I'm too old. <laughs> and he was like, you're being ridiculous. You should try. And so I, um, on a whim one night, I just signed up for a, a modeling agency and um and they picked me and I was like oh I'm not too old <laughs> hey they need okay. modeling people for everything I feel like the first modeling thing I ever did I was at a race car event oh, fun. in Latin America and oh, I fun. somebody was I was going to the bathroom and all of a sudden they're like hey you you want to sign up for this thing and I was just like no I have to pee 
<laughs> definitely not gonna happen but then they called me the next day and I I was on the back of buses I've been on oh, uh, Zoom, uh, giant billboards yeah so you never know how you're gonna be sourced yeah you yeah. just have to be you but for you to pivot like that to understand about what you need to do so what are you doing now that we're back in the realm there's mm -hmm. you've been in a couple events now what is your new marketing idea? Um, so now I'm I'm doing bigger events. So I started with some small ones pre-COVID. And then um, we actually had a big event planned for the Thanksgiving of 2020 at McMenamin. It was supposed to be our first big, huge event. And obviously that didn't happen. For months, I was like, well, is it? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. And we eventually just tabled it to the following year when we started. Um, and so now my my push is to just do bigger events. I started with the small ones. I've got the nice email database list. I've got people who have been coming. And so now I can push to bigger events. And um, I kind of, I really like them and I hate them at the same time. Like I hate all the logistics and the anxiety and are the people going to buy tickets and do they like what I'm giving them? But I also like, I get to do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> so I just pick, you know, whatever theme that I've decided that just, you know, scratching that itch for creativity. I'm like, okay, we're going to do a show about this. <laughs> and so what kind of shows do you provide? Can you give me like a little bit of a list yeah. of your set? So they're all aerial arts shows. Um, we mix them with burlesque. We, um, we mix them with drag queens. I try to make kind of a more aerial centered, but a variety show still. And um, it's been really nice actually, because I can, I'm able to go back to people that I've performed with before because I've known, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So I know a lot of performers and I can, I try to pick one or two local people whenever we do the shows, um, the students get to be in them. And then I bring out two big, tall, beautiful drag queens from Portland <laughs> that I just adore to be the announcers. <laughs> so it's kind of nice. I get to work with my friends and I get to say, hey, okay, this is the concept. Do you want to get weird? <laughs> or do you have something that fits this idea? But you are traveling nationwide now. So you're not only in Portland, you go all over the country, right? Yeah. So that was pre-COVID. I did, gosh, I did a lot of traveling pre-COVID. Matter of fact, I was traveling during COVID or right before COVID hit, I had a competition in Ireland and I was on the way back when like the world just shut down. And so I was like, was that my last time ever on stage? You know, I mean, I'm never going to do this again. So now that things are getting back up and moving forward, um, I'm going to start traveling a little bit more and I can, I did travel to New York actually. And I did, um, I did a week long like modeling acting convention, which was really lovely. And I actually got to dance in that. So I got to fill my little child's heart of, I wanna be a dancer in New York. <laughs> Can we look at the website one more time? Just looking at like the aerial acrobatics that she does. This is how I met her, Jane. You were an inspiration, how beautiful that you have been. And uh, yeah, we made great friendship over your obvious talent. Like it's been fantastic. And I love to see your growth, but I mean, just look at her muscles in this video, right? <laughs> Anybody can see her in this. <laughs> we know she can, I'm like, I literally bought a little acro yoga thing outside oh, with a little self so I can try to keep up with oh, you. Nice you to come over and like give me some yeah, I'll give you some tips. I yeah. love it that's the that's the side bonus that I'm like I'm always gonna be fit because I'm always working out all the time but the downside to that is you're sore all the time well you know if your muscles hurt they're doing something yep. right yep so you are you doing online classes now yeah we do some online classes um on top of our in person. So we still have online for people who don't feel comfortable coming into the studio, or um, I have some students that have moved away and some from a couple of other states that they just log in. And it, it basically is just a class. Like they log in, they see the class behind them, and then we, we treat them as if they're a person in the class. What type of classes are they? Are they aerial classes? Do we have to have equipment for them? Yeah, so these are all pole classes. 
um, because aerial equipment is kind of hard to teach online. I've tried taking some online aerial classes and they're just challenging. So these are predominantly pole classes. We've got a couple of like sexy flow where you just kind of roll around on the floor. Um, we had some chair dance for a while, but, <laughs> but people kept bringing in very random chairs. Like they weren't reading the description about you need a specific type of foldable chair. And so we would get rolling chairs and like, you know, step stools and it just wasn't working. <laughs> hey, we work from home. We all need to figure it out, right? Yeah. Like my current chair I'm sitting in is definitely not a, a good back support, but that's yeah. probably not something I should be bringing to a sexy chair class. Yeah, like it just, the rolling chairs were the worst because the the, the students would sit down and the chair would just move. <laughs> Hey, we work with what we got, you know, right. we're all working from home. We're trying to work out. You're helping us. If that's we not what COVID's for us. <laughs> so when you talk about pole classes, you're talking about people who have a pole at their house. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a pole in order to do them. Yeah. And aerial, are you talking about people who have an outdoor acro? Yeah. So aerials pole? were like, you would hang something from the ceiling or you would have a rig at home. And do you have like a silk class or? Yeah, so we we don't do any of those online. We do we do have silk classes. We've got rope now. Um, we've got lira, which is the big metal hoop that you hang from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And then um, I've got a bunch of specialty apparatuses. So every now and then I'll do a workshop with like the moon or the anchor. Mm -hmm. And I just bought a new diamond. <laughs> Yeah, this girl's amazing. She came out with her moon and just looking all majestic. So yes, but if you don't have this equipment at home, there's still an opportunity for you. Jane is touching on all types of at home, you know, aerial or interest for some of these classes. So how do we find you for something like this? Are you working with an agency or? Yeah, a so um, if you want to do aerial classes or you're looking for some online classes, um, my studio name's Athena Vertical Dance and it's in Tacoma, Washington. Um, you can do them online. You can do them in person. You can also download the app. <laughs> We've got our own app. And then I, oh, there's an app too. Awesome. Yeah, it just, it oh, just. Oh, look at you. You, you've grown so much since I met you. Oh gosh. So, if, so when sometimes you pick these events, like the event I met you at, mm -hmm. so called Pixie Party or oh, something. Oh yeah, Pixie does. Pixie Fest, yes. Uh, we met that was her. my favorite. <laughs> yes, I'm sad I missed it this year. This is in Olympia, Washington. It is a great little mini festival at somebody's house, uh, a farm that they've created. They're really pushing it out, but really great artists that come to it, really communal artists from the community. I know we're talking to people a lot of times throughout the entire United States at this show, but I'm wondering how do you pick the events that you want to perform? So a lot of that comes down to um, which ones are coming towards me. So I'll, I really like festivals. It's kind of where I started doing aerials as I, I transitioned from pole dancing into aerials and I have this lollipop, it's like a big standalone piece of equipment. It's got a hoop on the top and a pole down the center. Um, and I started doing festivals because it's, you could just set it up wherever. And so I do, I do hunt down festivals and I submit myself all the time for different things. Um, I also use Instagram a lot to find other shows. And I'm like, do you need a performer? You know, you look like you do some fun, weird stuff. So I kind of pick my events that I'm performing at um, on whether or not I feel like I would be a good fit. And so that kind of goes back to what you're saying, like know your brand, know what you like to do, know who you are and what you want. And don't do things just because you've someone offered them to you if it's not a good fit for you. So I won't do things. Oh, mm -hmm. Are you... Are great concept but are you paying to go to these events or are they paying you they pay or is it just a cross collaboration yeah they pay they pay me it just depends on what kind of event it is um usually they pay me some events i just really like that there's artists collaborating and i'm like okay that sounds awesome i'll throw my hat in and like with the pixie dust um hilda does all the costumes and then she's got will who does all the music and then she's got body painters that come in and i get to go do my art painted with someone else's art. Like it's my favorite. 
So those things I'll I'll hunt down and I'll I'll even do them for free sometimes because I just like them so much. So that's a mega cross collaborator. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, cross collaboration. If you're gonna say it, so oh, yeah. there's somebody who is there who's offering their art to paint you. There's somebody who's offering their land to be a part of it. There's artists who want you to dance or be there. So it's really just like a super community is what we're talking about yeah right the lighting like there's a lighting person there's you know this time I think they had they had tv screens in the back that they were putting different types of um art on top of as well as the person who's DJing the music and then I'm over in the corner so my absolute favorite is to have all art melt together and create some sort of magic and that's how I met you and it was yeah. Fantastic. I was actually there helping a friend vend some sunglasses and that's how we all met oh <laughs> right next to the person who was body painting you. So it's fantastic. Your art is absolutely beautiful. And I just want to know what is your next step? Like what is your next milestone that you're looking for as a woman entrepreneur with your own brand? What do you want to get to? Well, I think my, like my current motivation right now and what I feel like I'm pushing more towards is helping other people get creative. So, you know, setting up space so that they don't have to go through all the things that I did. You know, I, I did the drag circuit for $20 an hour where, you know, $20 a gig where I lugged all this equipment in and I, you know, just kind of plugged away to meet other people. And so I want to use all that information and knowledge and, and, um, contacts to be able to facilitate other people to get out there and be creative because it's tricky in the beginning and you have to really you have to really hustle and you have to be willing to just take the punches and that stops people I think sometimes from pushing forward on stuff that they really want to do how did you realize this was going to be your full-time gig what did you do before this and how did you realize this was going to be like okay this I'm all in this is my full-time yeah. job well there's Eating peacocks, you know. Yeah, other that was a random. It's kind of weird. My um, we moved out. My husband and I owned an internet company. We moved out to Washington. I'll try to keep the story short. Um, and we we moved out to this like land in the middle of nowhere because we had an internet company. We could, and it tanked. And so we started selling oysters. We we're like, okay, well, what do we do now? We've got these oysters on the beach, and so we started selling oysters. And we, it was just the two of us. So it was like grimy and dirty and gross and nasty. And all I wanted was something that was going to make me feel sexy. So I, I found a pole class in the middle of Bremerton and I was like, I just want to dance. Like, I just want to move my body. And I, I took the class and it schooled me. I was teaching yoga too at the time. And I was like, I'm fit. This will be easy. It was so hard and it was so challenging. I was like, I'm in. And so from there, like I took class for probably a couple of years and I just fell into the studio. The teacher that owned it before me was leaving and I came home in tears and I told my husband, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've just lost the one thing that makes me happy like this. And what, like, what do I do now? Like, I can't, you know, I can't drive to Seattle. That's too far. Like, I, what am I going to do? And he was like, well, maybe we can buy it. And I was like, we can't buy it. We don't you know, just like so distraught. And so she ended up selling it to me and that just kind of pushed me forward into I'm all in at this point. And then somebody asked me to perform um, the first year I bought the studio and I was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I kind of want, let me see what that's like. And then I was in like me, I was making costumes and I was just creative, which is everywhere. And I was like, yes, this is me. And this is what I want to do. And did she, uh, during the story, did she leave it because of COVID or was this prior? No, this was prior. This is uh, 2014. So she was just moving away to Florida. So just open to opportunity. Yep. So that's what we have to tell our audience right now. Just being open to opportunity and being a yes person. I don't know if anybody yeah. ever saw the movie Yes Man. Love it. I, I believe <clears throat> no gets you nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yes is the best, you know, and sometimes you should probably say no, but saying yes will allow you these types of opportunities. And if your partner's like promoting you and you're ready to be there, then just go for it. And if you have a skill that they're looking for, and then all of a sudden, now all of a sudden you're entertaining, 
and it turned now you're acting Sprinkle into this thing it's like a big snowball into uh-huh. what your greatness and your brand is Jane. yeah your but brand. it's also like do things that scare you like just because it's scary doesn't mean that it won't work out you know right. push through that a little bit because there's been a lot of times and even now when I perform sometimes I'm like I, I don't know if I should be here I'm not good enough for this thing and, and there's that fear of like what it what do I do? And sometimes that you just push through it and then all this magic happens. Right. It's not a woulda, shoulda, coulda. It's woulda, shoulda, did it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So are you, you're acting now and you're performing and how's that going? Yeah. So I just started, like I said, I just started during COVID with the modeling and the acting. And I went to New York um, at this thing called IMTA, which is like I think it stands for International Model Acting and Talent. And, and again, it's that do something that scares you. Like, this terrifies me. But and I'm like, I'm a weird person. Like, maybe people will like me. I'm strange. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do this thing. And each day you had to audition for different people with different types of things. Some of them were terribly terrifying for me. Like, I had to do an improv like <laughs> they're doing improv thing. I'm like, I don't, there's no lines. Like, what do I do? So from there, like from there, you get like different acting gigs and stuff like that. I did get an agency out of it. And I've done a couple of tiny little things here and there. But the cool part about it is that because of COVID, this is one of the good things that came out of COVID. Because of COVID, all the interviews are now on Zoom. So yeah. you don't have to go anywhere. You just turn your Zoom on, you get a nice clear background and a good microphone and you can audition right. and you're not traveling so much because that wouldn't work out for my life. And that's a lot more expensive. So we look at the, thank you for saying that because I want to talk to people about the glass being half full, not half empty yeah. from COVID. It was very difficult for people over COVID to make their passions into their careers and also make money off of it but there's also the glass half full that like the things that you're pursuing could be pursued virtually yeah so so great to be able to see that like this is being able to be successful and work for some people so I'm so happy that you were able to do that so you are successful I'm seeing you progress even more every day because I follow you on social media you do (laughs) This is Jane Carter. She's absolutely amazing. If you want to hire her, she goes nationwide for any of her acro. She is amazing. I'm telling you, she's one of the most talented people I've ever seen in aerial arts, for (laughs) sure. Anybody in Hawaii, if you want some like great, uh, yeah, I would love a statement. Yeah, send her to Hawaii for (laughs) sure. I'm sure she would love that. She's in Washington, so she's very close. Um, But if you had any other advice for women entrepreneurs specifically, and then maybe entrepreneurs in general, what advice would you give? Um, I think, you know, for entrepreneurs in general, it's do, do the thing that makes, that terrifies you push through that place where you're like, I'm, I'm scared of failure. Am I going to fail? You're never going to know if you're going to fail unless you try. And, you know, if you don't try, the answer is always no. So always, you know, try to push forward through that. Um, in regards to female entrepreneurs, you got to learn to get a thick skin <laughs> because the world will try to push you around. So, you know, figure out what it is that you want. What is special about you? What is um, something about you that no one else has? And and that's your brand. And then you, you know, push push that forward and find things that that are in line with that brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly like you mentioned earlier. Network, find the people that are aligned with your vision, with your production, and then just promote yourself, whether it's through Instagram or just like reaching out to them, like be a voice for your own brand. Yeah. And and join groups. Your talent. And and join groups of people that do the same thing that you do, because you're, you're never going to know, you know, who you're making contacts with until later on. Like, I mean, like you, like we had such a good time at Pixie Dust. I know we did. Yes. And I was just there helping another friend with their booth. 
to help bend because she needed an extra hand. And I was right around the corner. So I went there and I met you doing your thing on your little moon. And it was absolutely fantastic. And I've just watched you grow. And I've seen that we met prior to COVID. Yeah. So I've watched you become an entire brand by yourself. And now you're an actress. So you're trying. <laughs> so you're doing great. And so that's why I really wanted to bring you on the show is just to show other people that you can create a brand around yourself. Doesn't have to be with a company. You can make it through COVID just with your talent. And so entertainment is now and we're getting back into that realm. So if you are an entertainer and you're watching this, you can definitely make a business, make some money, turn your passion into a career. Jane Carter, thank you so much for being on this show. And everybody else, Thank you for watching Adventures in Commercialization. If you want to learn how to turn your passion into a career and make some money, follow us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.